Okay, uh, you all see that? We're going to re uh, review the uh, events to the south of the, the Pashtuns. That's uh, great. Okay, so off we go. Uh, I, I just want to review. Um, remember the Mughals threw the Pashtuns out of Patna, and in, in uh, uh, reaction to that the defeat, you, you have uh, this famous Pashtun. It was a combination of warrior, poet, Sufi, revolutionary, and linguist. He invented uh, the, the Pashtu, uh, Pashtun um, uh, uh, alphabet, and uh, he, he, he's in the 1500s. Um, and there's a whole uh, movement that follows behind him for an, at least another hundred years. And that, that movement says, hey, uh, we need our, our own Pashtunistan. And as we've talked about before, uh, uh, the, uh, the, a higher number of uh, Pashtuns live in the current uh, uh, Pakistan, but uh, the Pashtuns comprise 50% of Afghanistan, whereas because Pakistan is so populous, they, they only comprise 15% uh, of the population there. So this idea of uh, Pashtunistan was conceived in, in defeat. And you remember who defeated uh, uh, the, the Patna Pashtuns, and that was uh, Babur, and, and he started um, uh, the Mughal dynasty. There's a couple other things I want to point out on this map. See this, this little uh, finger um, uh, from the, uh, the, the Punjabi ethnic. Uh, so it's the Punjabi uh, ethnicity that pushes up on the eastern border of, uh, uh, of the Pashtun land. Um, and there's a little already a little finger that is uh, uh, invading uh, Peshawar. Now remember Peshawar uh, is uh, between uh, uh, Peshawar and Kabul is the Khyber Pass. So this is uh, a, a heavy traffic, historically important uh, pass where all, all the uh, great armies have gone uh, back and forth, where all the trade has gone back and forth, where all the ideas uh, uh, have uh, gone back and forth. Um, also on this map, uh, coming up later, are uh, the Sindh ethnicity, um, uh, half of the uh, 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 Pakistan generals and political leaders are, are Sindh, uh, and uh, the, the Blue, uh, Baluchi, uh, and uh, uh, they comprise uh, uh, Pakistan's Baluchistan province, but you see they also spill over into uh, Iran and southern uh, Afghanistan. Um, so, so just bear this, this uh, ethnic uh, map in, in mind and, and remember uh, that, that uh, uh, the, the, the Roshani movement um, set up the, the nationalist idea of a, a national uh, Pashtunistan. Uh, and then following on that, there's another famous uh, uh, leader, uh, Kushal Katak. Uh, there's a Katak region in uh, 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 both uh, Afghanistan and um, Pakistan. So his name live, lives on as a, a, a geographical place, which means his ideas were important. And, and uh, Interestingly, uh, before he got his big ideas, he was a collaborator. He collaborated as opposed to uh, uh, the Roshanis. He, he decided, you know, I'll work with the Mughals and he served Shah Jahan, uh, the, the uh, 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 dynasty that, that built the, uh, uh, the Taj Mahal. So he was uh, Shah Jahan's uh, uh, right-hand man, and he collaborated at first. Um, but then uh, uh, he was imprisoned by Aurangzeb, uh, who was the sixth and last effective Mughal ru ruler. So let's take a time out and just review the Mughal uh, rulers. I'm only going to mention three, uh, four. 
We know Babur, uh, who got his start in, in uh, Kabul, and notice Kabul is solidly uh, Mughal uh, at that time. That's where uh, Babur started. Remember, Babur is Turkey, and he came down from, from uh, uh, the, the north. Um, so he was the founder. Uh, his grandson uh, was Akbar. We're, we're all familiar with, uh, with that, that name. And then comes Shah uh, Jahan um, as the most memorable of, of the, the rulers. I'm skipping a few just uh, to keep things uh, simple. And, and then Aurangzeb, who was the last effective uh, uh, Mughal ruler, and he died in 17. Uh, 07. So here we're going from 1526 to 1707, the height of Mughal power. Now they hang on for a while, and we're going to see how they fall apart in, in the uh, end. Uh, so Kabul is part of the Mughal Empire, but look what isn't. Kandahar. So Kandahar is, is the heart of uh, Pashtunistan, and they are not governed by the Mughals, whereas Kabul, which is more mixed ethnically, uh, with uh, uh, Turkic and uh, Pashtuns, um, uh, namely Tajiks, um, th they are solidly uh, in uh, the uh, um, uh, Mughal Empire. And you see how far Aurangzeb uh, uh, added all the way uh, down, except for the very, the very tip, which re re remained uh, Hindu. Uh, so the, the, the Mughals controlled all, as opposed to the Delhi Sultanates, the, 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 the Mughal Empire really took in all of uh, oh, uh, India and, and uh, uh, created some resentments, as we're seeing today. Uh, uh, India, uh, the um, uh, uh, Hindu majority politically now is, perse is persecuting. Um, the uh, Muslims, which now I think are about 20% of, of the uh, population in India and dropping. Um, so Katak, uh, after he gets out of jail, uh, he's kind of uh, upset about the way the, the Mughals have, have treated him, even though he collaborated with him for a while. So, you know, what, what he writes here is his poem in Pashtun, uh, it reminds us a little bit of our Patrick Henry. So here, you know, uh, talking against the Brits. So the Afghans are far superior to the Mughals at the sword. Uh, but uh, you know what? We're, we're not as discreet uh, intellectually. That's the word that gets translated. And if the different tribes would just support each other, uh, all the kings of the world would have to bow down before us. Um, so that's his sentiment. So. Meanwhile, now I'm shifting gears entirely because we've been ignoring the Hindus for about 500 years. So the, 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 that 500 year period just saw uh, the, the uh, Mughal Empire advance, advance, advance. And, and we saw all the way down uh, with uh, Aurangzeb, um, all the way to almost to the bottom. But now the Marathas finally uh, awaken the sleeping Hindu population. They're, they're so-called yeoman warriors, whatever that is, on the west coast of, of India. And they took advantage of the, the Mughals who after uh, the 150 years are, are starting to crack. Uh, and they come roaring in and this is, this is their founder. Shiva G. And you can see uh, in, in Hindu mythology, he gets a little halo. Um, so he, he comes on in 1674. For now, so now we're in the 1600s with, with Katak and, and Shiva G. Um, and let's just look at uh, some maps here. Uh, they're credited for putting pressure on the Mughals and in, in ending. Their, their rule, but they're not going to deliver the coup de grace. Uh, we're going to have a surprise player in the great game uh, uh, supply the coup de grace uh, of, of uh, Mughal uh, rule. Um, and so uh, the Hindus, uh, totally by accident, by putting pressure on the, the Mughals, uh, 
aid Pashtun dreams, their dreams of, of nationhood, because now maybe um, the, the, the Mughals will have to leave Kabul. Uh, they never went to Kandahar, but maybe the, uh, Kabul, where a lot of uh, Pashtuns live, uh, the Mughals will have to retreat because of the pressure uh, from the Hindus who've been slumbering for 500 years. Uh, so who supplies the coup de gras? It's the Brits. Uh, welcome the Brits to the great game where they're going to be a leading player, a huge player. We won't get to it this week, but next week they're going to be center stage um, in the history of, of uh, Afghanistan uh, and the, the great game. And, and again, uh, uh, if, we, if we look at the, the map, uh, we see uh, Sindh, um, but now the rest of the Punjab, uh, a lot of Punjabs con converted to this new religion, which took a little bit from Hinduism, a little bit from uh, Islam, and uh, became the Sikhs. And we're used in the Bay Area in particular, we have a lot of uh, a Sikhs, a very active Sikh uh, 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 community. And we know them from their, their, their turbans, their, their beards, uh, their uh, need to uh, carry a sword. I, I had some Sikh uh, patients at the, the clinic uh, who, who immigrated, my family practice clinic, wonderful families, very interesting people. Um, and, and they're going to be players in, in the great game, too. So welcome the Brits and the Sikhs uh, to the stage. But notice something about Afghanistan. It now is on the map because we're up to 1806 and something has happened back in um, uh, Afghanistan, in Kandahar in particular. Uh, and let's see what that is. But first, we've got to deal with the uh, the, the threat from the north uh, first. And that uh, in the 1700s is the Uzbeks. They've been up north for a while, but they haven't been threatening. They don't really uh, 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 advance or invade south in, until uh, the 1700s, but they've been there as you will see. Um, and the, they go from around 1700 to 1800. That's the period we're entering now. Um, uh, and uh, we have some of their Turkic predecessors. Their Turkic uh, uh, predecessors were mixed with Mongols. So Tamerlane and Babur both had a bit of Mongol and a bit of, of, of Turkic um, uh, in their uh, DNA. Uh, so it seems like it's easy to remember every uh, uh, 200 years, th th there's a threat from, from the north. Tamerlane conquers uh, Afghanistan, Babur uh, conquers at, at, the, at least Kabul, um, and, uh, uh, and now to another 200 years later, uh, the Uzbeks make their move uh, south. Um, and so... Uh, uh, you've got now uh, uh, Afghanistan uh, consumed by uh, by three powers. Um, so uh, the the uh, Mughals didn't uh, invade uh, Kandahar, um, but, but uh, uh, the Persians did, the Safavids, and so they're in control of the heartland of uh, 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 Pashtun Pashtunistan and they occupy uh, uh, Kandahar. Uh, so that's around 1700. But now let's just look a little bit about what the Uzbeks have been doing before 1700. So their, their whole uh, uh, kingdom of uh, Bukhara uh, survived for uh, 285 years. Look at these dates. Uh, they've been there a long uh, time. They just haven't pushed south, but they start to do that in 1700. Um, you'll notice, uh, and I like to make connections with our previous talks. Uh, we talked about Kiva when we were doing uh, the extension of uh, Russian hi history into the 1800s. You'll remember 
um, that the Russians all of a sudden, after uh, helping defeat Napoleon, uh, got a great surge of self-confidence and decided to put a stop to the, the white slave market that had been started by the Mongols and been centered in Kiva. And that was, that was their, their goal. And the other thing I, I just want to point out uh, uh, are bodies of water. We know the Black Sea's uh, way over there. Here's the Caspian uh, Sea. Here's the uh, uh, Sea of Aral. Um, and uh, this is uh, Lake Baikal. So you can remember uh, with the mnemonic CAB, C-A-B, Caspian Air uh, by, uh, Lake Baikal. Um, and, and these are all very strange bodies of water. Uh, I just learned about them as we've done uh, Pashtunistan. Um, but these are the things that Ramsey uh, uh, knows by, by heart. Uh, now because he's been studying uh, uh, this area. So he's taught me a lot uh, as, as well. Um, and so this is, I, I pulled, went back and got this map from my, my Russia lectures when we got to the 1800s. And yep, here's, here's Kiva where the white slavery was. Um, and I'll just say, you know, I, I uh, uh, to the larger group, um, uh, uh, Ramsey's going to uh, start, and he's soliciting ideas for a new direction to go after we finish uh, European uh, Western history. Um, and and I'm, I, my instinct is that he very much would like to do uh, the Silk Road because he's planning a trip there. And he just finished the trip during COVID times uh, to the uh, western terminus of uh, the Silk Road, um, uh, Istanbul, uh, uh, Georgia, uh, and uh, Armenia. Uh, so I know he's primed uh, to do it. So those, those of us that uh, attend uh, his lectures, uh, uh, I, I just want you to be aware, I think he'd be really keen on doing it. We're debating uh, which, which way to go very democratically, um, but that's just my instinct. Um, okay, so uh, the founder of the Uzbek nation uh, was uh, uh, this guy. We go back to 1500, um, uh, Shaibani. Um, and, and he did try to invade South. So he did try to in, uh, 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 invade the Safavids, but he, he was uh, turned back by Ishmael I, the founder of the Safavid dynasty. You remember him? He, he was the one that, 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 that said, hey, we're solidly Shia now. Um, we have been Sufi. Uh, he, came, he and his uh, uh, ancestors came from the Sufi uh, tradition, but he, he all of a sudden got the notion that, that he was the reincarnation of Ali. Uh, and so uh, that's a heavy burden. So he felt that he needed uh, to turn the, the Sufi uh, uh, movement in that part of, his, uh, of, the, of the world, which was the Caspian Sea and uh, uh, Kurdistan. You'll remember when we talked about Ishmael, how, how varied his background was. His family tree was very mixed. Um, and anyway, as uh, the reincarnation of Ali, he, he starts a, a, a new Persian Shia uh, emphasis. Um, and he turns back uh, the Uzbeks and they, they uh, retreat for a couple of hundred years, but they're starting to get a little aggressive and that's why we're talking about him now. Um, the, in the meantime, during that 200 years, they didn't sit around there, they are Muslims. And they got uh, uh, the, the Muslim architecture, uh, uh, beautiful. They've got uh, madrasas. Uh, they've got the, the whole uh, culture. Um, and that's something that the, the, the Russians had to contend with as they were settling their southern frontier, which was dealing in white slavery and uh, other things like that. But they, they had to deal 
with uh, Turkey uh, uh, warriors who were also religious, who had an ideology. You know, we uh, some people like to compare the Russian settlement of their southern frontier with uh, America's settlement of the western frontier, and there's no comparison because they had to deal with a group of people that had a unifying ideology. Now it's imperfect, and we're just we're going to be spending a lot of time talking about how uh, imperfect. Uh, that uh, ideology is as a unifying force. Um, but uh, 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 you'll see how, how beautiful uh, the, their uh, architecture is. This is Uzbek uh, 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 in Bukhara, uh, the uh, Bukhara Empire. Um, I just am going to put in a, a humorous note. I don't know what it is about... Um, uh, uh, Turkic national nationalities that makes uh, uh, American comedians um, and actually uh, Israeli comedians uh, joke about them. Um, and this is uh, from Second City, Chicago. I, I was a big fan. Think of uh, Saturday Night Live before Saturday Night Live. And a lot of uh, Second City people wound up on uh, uh, Saturday Night Live. Uh, but this is, is uh, uh, John Candy, um, and he plays a troubleshooter uh, in an unnamed uh, uh, Turkey country. And uh, he's solving problems. He's a, a, a crime solver, um, and he's looking on, and everybody sees, hey, Georgie, solve this problem. Hey, Georgie, solve that problem. And here's this guy has got a, a, a problem with his car. And uh, uh, Georgie always figures out there's some Uzbek, Uzbek connection. So they're, they're, they're playing the, the, the word Uzbek for comedy. And in this particular situation, the guy with a stalled car, I'll never forget this crazy joke. Uh, the problem uh, with his car as they look in and they discover something going on under the hood. And it's Uzbeks who have taken drinking straws and drank the battery acid fluid. Um, and that was the joke. It was so weird. Um, so, uh, but that's not the only instance of Western culture making fun of, of, of Turkey. Uh, society. And I don't know whether it's because they're Altaic and there's this huge language difference or and we're um, uh, Indo-European. I don't that's that's a wild uh, theory, but there's something going on. Uh, you'll notice Almaty is in Kazakhstan and we all re remember Borat uh, and the fun that he made of Kazakhstan. Why? I don't know. But here uh, he's going through a, a Kazakh village and a Kazakh woman, instead of a horse, is pulling the cart. And that, that he made joke after joke, making fun of Kazakhstan. Uh, and so there he is uh, uh, pulling a cart. But funny thing, um, he has in Kazakhstan, at first they were defensive, but somebody in Kazakhstan said, hey, wait a minute, we can turn this into a positive. Uh, we can uh, uh, use Borat uh, as a, uh, a salesman for tourism in Kazakhstan. And Borat went along with it. Uh, 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 his real name is uh, Sacha something Cohen, right? Oh, from, from Israel. Baron, Baron. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Sacha Bar Baron Cohen from Israel. And now he's a spokesman for come and visit Kazakhstan. Anyway, um, uh, 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 thank you for indulging my, my uh, curious uh, interlude about uh, humor and the Altaic speaking uh, Turks. Uh, so um, here we are in the late 1700s now. And this is uh, 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 my goal is to get through the 1700s. Um, and uh, 
if you do a survey of the border, uh, the Pashtuns have openings. Uh, Katak's plan for a homeland may not be so far-fetched after all. In the South, we know the Mughals are, we are being weakened by the Hindu Marathas. In the North, the Uzbek dynasty is on the wane. It surged in the early uh, 1700s, but it couldn't handle success. So it's on the wane. And in the West, the Safavids are also on uh, uh, the wane and they've lost uh, control of uh, Kandahar. The Mughals have come in and competed with them for Kandahar, but uh, they're, they're gonna weaken uh, each other and the Pashtuns are gonna uh, capitalize on that. The only direction not covered is the East, which is, are the Himalayas. So you've got a good protection, protective border there. So this map just uh, summarizes the beginning of the 1700s. Um, and we're going to see what, what happens to all three of these uh, empires as they uh, weaken. Um, so the, uh, the third big Pashtun patriot is this guy, Mir Weiss. Uh, and he is the first indigenous Pashtun ruler of, of home turf. And he uh, is from the Ho Hotak tribe. And he puts up a dynasty. It only lasts 20 years, but it's in Kandahar. Uh, we kept keep talking about Kandahar as the heartland of, of Pashtunistan, if you will. Um, and so he uh, is the first one, at Mirwas. Um, he to, to do that uh, and, and set up the Hotek uh, Empire only lasted 20 years. He had to throw out the uh, uh, Safavids uh, that were there at the uh, time. And the Safavids were, I told you, a very mixed uh, group. And they had a Georgian mercenary that was the governor of, of Kandahar. And Mirwas uh, uh, led a rebellion uh, uh, against this Georgian uh, uh, mercenary governor. Uh, in in Kal, uh, Kandahar. Now, the, the, the Safavids struck back and they captured Mirwas. So he was initially unsuccessful. Um, but for some reason, um, the uh, Safavids allowed Mirwas to go to Mecca. Um, I, I don't know what the story is behind that, but he's a, he, he's a prisoner. Okay, you can make the pilgrimage to Mecca. And he does. And when he's there, he secures a fatwa uh, from the Arabs, um, legitimizing a revolt against the apostate Shia Safavids. So this is going to backfire on, a big time on the Safavids. So for... Uh, he, he comes back with a, a religious weapon, a, a fatwa. Um, and uh, whether it's that or it's something else allows, uh, 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 that allows him to succeed, he does. Um, and I'm going to say this is the first instance of many instances of Arab influence in the affairs of Pakistan. I'm not counting the legendary first uh, one where uh, uh, Kweiss is uh, the Pashtun uh, founding father in, in the uh, 600s um, was reported to have gone to Mecca and met Muhammad. I'm not gonna count that one, but the, the, in the modern times, th this is uh, uh, Example number one of how the Arabs uh, influence what's going on um, and uh, in Afghanistan, and it continues to today. Many more numbers to come. Um, uh, the uh, uh, Turkmen tribe uh, uh, from the north uh, ended uh, the the Hotak and uh, uh, dynasty. We're not going to spend any any time on the, this empire. It was it was minor. Um, it lasted a while, um, but we're we're going to move on to what happened in Kandahar. They couldn't control Kandahar. 
um, the Turkomans. They just couldn't. So in the in the Pashtun homeland, uh, uh, they uh, uh, they lost control. The Safavid lost control first, uh, and then the uh, the, uh, the Turkic um, government lost uh, control. So now all of a sudden, Kandahar uh, uh, following. Uh, in, in the footsteps of the, of the Hotex finds uh, there's a political vacuum. And so they, they hold a, a jirga. Uh, that's a tribal uh, a council. We remember uh, Afghanistan held a, a, a jirga uh, very early after the uh, uh, American in, invasion uh, to par participate and cooperate with, with the, the Americans. So they, they hold a, a, a tribal a jirga, all the wise men from all the clans. And this is the, 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 uh, plague of the Pashtuns. They have so many different, uh, sub tribes and clans. So they all get together and they choose a, a, a young charismatic, uh, uh, leader, uh, Ahmad Shah. And he is from the Durrani uh, clan. And we've talked about the uh, Gilzais in the past, how um, uh, the, the, the dynasty of, uh, they, they supplied the leadership to the fifth uh, 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 dynasty of the Delhi Sultanate, uh, the Lodi. Um, uh, so, but the Durrani are uh, more from uh, the Pashtun homeland. The Gilzais were more from the east, if you remember the map. Um, now, the next slide is going to show the, the coronation of, uh, I'm omitting somebody here. Uh, it's going to uh, show the coronation uh, uh, of uh, Ahmad Shah. And it's presided over by a Sufi priest. I want to just emphasize that the, the, the Sufis are, um, uh, the Sufi religion is, is still very strong at this time um, in Afghanistan. Uh, and you remember uh, that Pir Roshan was a Sufi. And so the Sufis continue over the, the uh, 200 years since him. Uh, to still be a presence. Um, and so this is a, a, a Sufi, um, a priest uh, 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 anointing uh, uh, the new uh, Durrani uh, leader. And he is going to form the Durrani Empire, named after his uh, uh, tribe. Um, and uh, so the Durrani Empire is going to be much more long lived than the Hotak was. It goes for 80 years. So much more successful. Um, and uh, we'll look at, at the map just to show you how successful. But when the Durrani first come on the throne before they've expanded, uh, they get an urgent invitation from the Muslims in India, the, 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 the Maratha Hindu are now not only threatening the Mughals, but they're threatening their religion. Uh, and so this uh, Shah Waliullah uh, issues an invitation, Durrani's come down here. You've been down here before you Pashtuns uh, in, in uh, Lodi and, and Patna. Uh, come on down here a, a third time and um, help crush the, the Maratha Hindus, um, uh, the, the, these infidels, these Hindu infidels, um, and the Durrani's comply. Uh, and that, that's, that earns them the name empire. If, if you uh, have success abroad, that's how you get to be uh, an empire, uh, empire. And now the Pashtuns, uh, are, are doing their own great game. They're interfering in, in another country. And as the Mughals uh, weaken, they're, they're helping the, the, uh, uh, the imams to uh, make sure that, that the Muslim religion won't be crushed by, by the Hindus. Um, so uh, I showed a slide when we were 
uh, doing the Ma, uh, Marathas last time, I took the liberty of going all the way uh, uh, to the end of the Maratha uh, uh, power. And that, that happened in 1818. So not only did uh, uh, the Brits eventually apply the coup de gras to the Mughals, they have put the coup, uh, coup de gras to uh, the Hindus as, as well. They, they were an equal opp opportunity uh, coup administrator. Uh, and they uh, un uh, inadvertently assisted the Pashtun Durrani's expand uh, by, by removing both the Marathas and weakening uh, the, the Mughals. And so they, uh, the Pashtuns played uh, uh, one infidel off uh, against uh, the other. Uh, you'll notice on, on this map, uh, again, the Sikhs and, and the Sins, um, uh, but look at the size of Afghanistan. It is, uh, you're not in Kandahar anymore. They're, they've really stretched out all the way to the uh, Himalayas. Um, and they're very successful players in this uh, great game thing. So as uh, just to summarize the, the influence of um, the um, uh, Arab uh, connection. Uh, I, I, I said that Mir Weiss and his uh, uh, pilgrimage to Mecca and getting the fatwa uh, against the uh, Safavid Shias, that was uh, episode number one of collaboration uh, with Arabs. Uh, and number two is going to be this Shah. Waliula, Waliula, uh, the, the, the same guy that invited the Pashtuns down to help take care of the Marathas, he initiates another, a second Arab uh, connection. And who's that with? Huh, it's with Al Wahhab, Wahhabi. Uh, that's, a, that's a familiar name. If um, we look at the, the, the folks, uh, the, the, the 15 of the 19 uh, that participated in 9-11, they were Wahhabis. Um, and so uh, now we're only at uh, 1750, and we see uh, Wahhabis on, on the horizon. They make their first appearance on, on the world stage and uh, they collaborate with this uh, uh, cleric uh, who's trying to uh, protect the, the Muslim religion um, from the Hindus. They collaborate on, hey, you know what? Uh, the, maybe the best thing to do is to become fundamentalists. Uh, to go back to, to the uh, original, just like we see Christian fundamentalists, uh, the, these are Muslim uh, fun, fundamentalists. Go back to the original text, uh, behave like they behaved in the time of Islam. No new uh, uh, fangled uh, reforms. And so they, they collaborate. <laughs> And now you have a, another Arab connection uh, in 1750, that early. Uh, and uh, just to time travel, um, uh, the, the, right now there's a civil war in Afghanistan um, between the, the, the Wahhabists uh, and the Diobandis. Okay, I'll, exp I'll uh, uh, remind you what Diobandi is in just a second. Uh, but first, uh, there's a word that we need to understand, and it's takfir. Uh, so takfir is when you uh, um, issue a fatwa and excommunicate a fellow Muslim. It's the worst thing you can do. It's a death sentence. Um, and uh, if you think a fellow Muslim is, is uh, uh, guilty, um, uh, you, you call him a takfir and you can kill him uh, and because uh, he's no longer a Muslim. And this is what's happening in Afghanistan uh, right now. You have the two sides, the, the Wahhabists 
uh, and the Diabandis, and I'll explain that this in a little more detail, what a Diabandi is, but they're both extreme uh, jihadists. Uh, they're both extreme uh, jihadists, and now they're fighting each other. Um, and uh, I'll just remind you uh, who the Diabandis were. Remember, they're from very different uh, branches of um, uh, Islam. Uh, you have the Hanafi, which in general uh, is more like Protestants. They accept re, uh, reform in general. Uh, and then you have the Hanbali uh, in Saudi Arabia who lean more, no, no, let's, let's stick with what actually was going on in, in Muhammad's time. And remember, uh, overlying all this are, are, is the Sufi alternative, right? But uh, it, it's not a particular branch. It's just the mi a mystical extreme of, of almost any branch. Um, so, and, and as an offshoot uh, for the Hanbali, um, uh, we have the, the Wahhabists and the, the Salabists. Uh, there's a subtle distinction there I'll get to in a second. So you, you have this uh, 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 fu fundamentalist uh, offshoot uh, that are the, are the jihadists uh, that are supply um, uh, the, uh, the terrorists that we're seeing now and supply the terrorists for 9-11. Uh, on the other hand, you have the Easter. Now, there's some connection between the Diubandi and the Wahhabi, as I showed in the last slide. In, uh, between the two leaders in 1750. So there's some connection between the two, but they're from very different uh, traditions. And the Diobandi are active in uh, uh, Pakistan, India, and Af Afghanistan. And the Taliban uh, are the Diobandis. And so they have the, the ideological framework to call each other takfirs. There are enough uh, of, of, of a religious ideological difference that they can uh, accuse each other of being apostate and kill each other. And that's what they're doing in Afghanistan uh, now. Um, ju just a, a, a Salafism, a word um, a, a little bit different than uh, Wahhabist. Uh, a Salaf was just a close follower uh, of um, uh, Muhammad, and they're supposedly more tolerant than honoring his uh, uh, disciples and uh, sub prophets. Um, and uh, uh, it's a subtle difference, and in, 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 uh, a lot of times jihadists are perfectly happy being called uh, Salafists. Um, I just want to say this kind of crazy uh, civil war where everybody calls each other takfir and says you're apostate and I can kill you. There is a precedent for this. If you read Looming Tower, you'll remember the civil war in Algeria in the 1990s. Um, and uh, here you had a face off between the Islamic brothers who basically believe in trying to get a, a society to be more Islamic by working within the political system, running for office. Um, and they did in Egypt and they were in government, they were in control um, uh, for a brief period in, until uh, Sisi over, overthrew them. Um, because they were, uh, even though they, they wanted to, they say they were going to work within the existing political system, they, they, they pushed too, too far too quick uh, for the taste of, of Egyptians. Um, uh, so there was a branch in Algeria, and they were cooperating uh, uh, with the uh, Algerian um, uh, gov uh, uh, governmental system. They ran uh, for, uh, they were running for uh, uh, an election and they were going to win. And there was a military coup that prevented the more moderate Islamic brothers from taking power. It wasn't like uh, uh, in Egypt where uh, they gave them power for a brief period of time to see how they do. And then Sisi uh, uh, stopped it. 
it, it, in Algeria, they, they didn't even let them have an election that they knew they were going to win. So the military, uh, uh, and so this triggered um, uh, a, a counter uh, reaction uh, against, hey, you didn't even let a, a, the people of Algeria vote. We're, we're, we're Wahhabists now. And uh, they, they, they took to the hills, um, but pretty soon th there were different uh, branches uh, of uh, jihadists. And what happened is they kept uh, calling each other takfirs and uh, they, they kept uh, therefore feeling that, that they could uh, kill any public servant, could kill anybody with a, a voting card, uh, that, that uh, they could go in and kill an entire village um, if uh, they'd expressed any sympathy with the Islamic Brotherhood. Uh, it, 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 and then it just became an insane. Uh, there was one, one guy beheaded his own father. Um, and finally, there was a, a fatwa is issued against the entire population of Algeria. Uh, and even bin Laden was horrified at how quickly um, uh, a uh, movement like of uh, uh, jihadists can get out of control. And that may be what's happening in Afghanistan uh, as we speak. So I, I now uh, that I, I've shown you uh, the effect of a Wahhabist uh, uh, since uh, 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 1750, I want to go back uh, to that time and talk about uh, Wahhab himself. He uh, uh, came out of the Bedouin uh, tradition of the, of the Saudi uh, desert. Um, he uh, was a fundamentalist. He rejected any kind of separation of mosque and state. And so who was separating mosque and state in those days? The Ottomans, uh, the Ottomans were, they had a, 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 a caliphate, uh, and, and, but they also had a military and a, a, a governmental structure. And whether he, he really opposed it uh, for, uh, as uh, being anti-Ottoman or whether he was uh, truly believed that uh, there shouldn't be any separation of mosque and, and state. He, he rebelled uh, and uh, uh, he was declared a, a heretic by the Ottomans, of course. Uh, so he looked around uh, for allies uh, and he found somebody that would sponsor them and they had a brief success. Uh, and who was it? that would come out of the Bedouin tradition and uh, give this heretic, uh, this fundamentalist, a uh, uh, brief uh, success. And when he had success, he started destroying the idols of, of Mecca. Um, uh, uh, and the, the uh, uh, fellow that supported Wahhab was Mohammed bin Saud. Uh, uh, the early founding father of uh, uh, the Saudi um, uh, uh, sub-tribe, um, a full tribe now that they have so much power. Now, this is not a, a real photo, right? The, the, this is one of those, uh, because there was no cameras in 1750. So this is uh, one of those things uh, where uh, you build myths looking back in history, and it's not, this wasn't true, but uh, there are some people who look at this picture and say, oh, yeah, so the Saudis and Wahhabs were tight in uh, 1750. Uh, so not historical, not historical, but I, I put it up because some people believe this is probably what they looked like. But what is historical was the, the alliance where the Saudis gave the, the Wahhabi clerics full religious control. The Saudis supplied the military arm and they worked together in a unified uh, mosque and state. Um, 
and they they held uh, uh, power briefly back then, but the Ottomans came and crushed them. But they came back uh, for a second time in the 1800s. Um, and I'll show you on this uh, map uh, uh, where they they were uh, right down here, Al Saad Dominion, and uh, it gave them control. They took control of Mecca in in the 1800s. And um, uh, what did they do? Uh, 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 well, the uh, the Ottomans uh reacted um they they had cut them short very short in the the first uh, uh saudi wahhab um uh, uh realm uh and they they tried to again but this time the uh the saudis hung on now the ottomans uh, uh in this quote are dark and oppressive and that's politically and militarily, and we saw that in Lawrence of Arabia, how how they could uh, how dark they could could be. But religiously, they were Sufi. So <laughs> religiously, the Ottomans were more tolerant. And I'll remind you that they had many Jewish advisors in uh, Istanbul. Uh, uh, many Jewish advisors, uh, and in some respects, that was a golden age for Judaism. Um, uh, and they built elabor elaborate mausoleums, which uh, the Wahhabis thought was idolatry. Um, and so we we see even in Afghanistan under Taliban rule. Um, uh, 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 accusations of, of idolatry against the wonderful uh, giant Buddha statues that they blew up. Um, so um, uh, back in 1800, uh, the, the Wahhabs, they have enough power with the Saudi uh, military and they march in uh, uh, to Mecca. I mentioned that they had destroyed some idols briefly in their first brief uh, Rain, but this time they get serious. And this is a, 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 a drawing of what Me Mecca may have looked like around uh, 1800. So uh, they come in and this time they target the tombs of women. They were their first targets. So uh, the, the uh, mausoleum for G Khadija, um, uh, uh, Muhammad's uh, uh, wife, who was uh, uh, 12 years older than he was, a very successful businesswoman, one of the unique uh, 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 man-wife relationships in, in history, uh, and he was true to her until she died. Then he, he took on, I think, an, uh, 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 four wives, but not, during, not while Khadija was alive. Uh, so her to her holy tomb, she's very respected. And she was the first follower. She, she was the first one to believe uh, the, the visions that, uh, that, that he had and, and uh, the messages that he transcribed from uh, Allah's dictation. Uh, and then they had daughters, including uh, Fatima, Ali's wife. Uh, let's destroy that mausoleum. And then, of course, they go over to uh, Karbala, uh, where the Shia uh, have uh, their uh, uh, mausoleums, and they destroy that, uh, especially uh, Hussein bin Ali, uh, who had been defeated uh, in, in Karbala and was martyred there and, and uh, had a mausoleum. They even destroyed um, a, a little... Uh, a mosque where Muhammad's tooth uh, was uh, 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 worshipped, um, a tooth that was broken uh, in battle the first time. And then when they, they, they tore down the little mosque, uh, it uh, broke again. And look at this. This is the, the shrine um, uh, uh, that uh, covered uh, uh, Muhammad's uh, daughter's uh, mausoleum. Hey, um so I brought, I came this morning and I don't 
don't know who I was talking to, but he said I should come back at one and see if he has time to fit in fixing my or polishing my um, headlight. I, uh, I, uh, Carol, I'm not sure that okay. was. I'm not sure that was intended for us. So it, it is mm -hmm. one o'clock, and uh, I, I'm, I, uh, I'll, uh, I'll take this up here uh, later. When uh, yeah. I return next yeah. week, I'll complete the Have story of how the Saudis destroyed um, uh, uh, sites, religious sites in uh -huh. both Mecca and uh, no, I don't at all. Medina. It's just so that I'll one time. stop the share Can at you? this point. And uh, Carol, uh, if you hear Is us, that... uh, mute yourself, or I guess I can mute you. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, I, I'm muting her. Um, uh, so uh, uh, it's one o'clock anyway. Um, I'll throw it up for open for questions. Oh, Irene's here. Welcome back, Irene. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, I I heard all but the first few minutes of today. I'm very happy to be back. Thank uh, you. Okay. Good to uh, Johnny, so uh, Al Qaeda is Wahhabi then? Uh, yes. Uh, Al Qaeda is, is full on uh, Wahhabi, um, and, and even this new branch of uh, Al Qaeda is the same. ISIS, yes, uh -huh. ISIS, ISIS is ultra Wahhabi. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the Taliban is Diobandi, um, and I'll talk a little bit more next week. Uh, review the Diobandi. Uh, how they started and, and what they believe and what and and what an and, and interview with the head of the Diabandi uh, sect in India uh, on what's happening with the Taliban. What unites the the, the Diabandi and the the Wahhabi Wahhabist is they don't like infidels in their space, right? <laughs> so they didn't like. Uh, uh, the, the uh, India Muslims did not like the Hindus in, in their space. Uh, uh, the, the, the Wahhabists didn't uh, like uh, the Brits uh, who were in Egypt uh, are coming into uh, their space. Uh, the Afghanis uh, didn't uh, like uh, the uh, uh, Russians uh, are coming into their space in the great game the first time. They didn't like the Brits coming into their space, and they didn't like <laughs> Americans coming into their space. So um, that, that unites, uh, that's one thing that the, the Diobandis and the, the Wahhabis uh, agree on. No infidels in our space. And if you look at uh, bin Laden's uh, rationale for 9-11, it's because American troops were in Saudi Arabia. Never mind that they had been invited there to protect the, the, the Saudis against Saddam Hussein. It didn't matter. They don't, uh, so that's the only thing uh, 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 that they, they strongly agree on, but they don't agree on enough uh, other stuff to keep them from killing each other in Afghanistan now. Yeah. Wow. That was really interesting. Thank you. Actually, it was terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, it, I come away from this um, and tell me if I'm really off on the wrong branch, but I come away from the talk today feeling like it's historic, it's been around, it's how they live. Just stay out because well, uh, I, don't, I don't see any intervention, help, whatever. Well, hold on. Okay. Uh, when, we, when we get to the end, I, I don't want any despair here. When we, when I, we I'm get, already in despair. <laughs> when we get to the end, I, I'll, uh, well, first of all, I'll recommend a source, a weekly uh, uh, source called the Gan Gandhara uh, Briefing. Uh, Gandhara, not Kantara. Uh, no, it starts with a G. Gandhara, G. Gandhara. G. It's in the Gandhara Buddha, that guy. Okay. Uh, that space. Uh, Northern Pash, uh, Pashtunist, uh, Pashtunistan. Uh, yeah. And it's by this guy, Sadiq, who I've talked about uh, uh, before. And he does a weekly briefing. He's also done some podcasts. 
And he talks about social media now and how uh, Pashtuns on uh, both sides of the border, Pakistan and Afghanistan, uh, or at least young people are talking about how to get out of this mess. Uh, and uh, it, it's interesting. Uh, the, the other thing, hopeful thing is television. Uh, <laughs> I, I may have mentioned that before. Uh, Afghanistan is in the stage of uh, really uh, enjoying uh, uh, am amateur uh, musical contests like we've, we've, we've gone through that stage, right? I, I can't remember the name of our shows. But it's called American have, Idol. Yeah, thank you. American <laughs> Idol. And then there's the Eurovision. You know, it's a worldwide phenomenon where all the different uh, ethnicities in Europe uh, uh, enjoy com uh, 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 competing against each other on the musical stage. So they have that in Afg Afghanistan. And, and uh, so, I, you know, there's been some cultural changes. You know, I, I, I'm not sure I'll ever uh, see the fruits of it in my lifetime. Uh, but, you know, somebody young like Tina might. <laughs> Tina, you're going to take up that torch. <laughs> I am okay, 71. guys. I am 71. I'm not that much younger than you. <laughs> hey, hey, that's half a generation. <laughs> that's, that's half a generation. Mm -hmm. um, and okay. I think I have children older than yours. <laughs> well, that that, that 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 was a lifestyle issue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I've got, a, 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 unfortunately, a very busy clinic. I'd love to uh, sit and, and talk some more, but I'm, I'm going to have to sign off now. Okay. Uh, so I'll stop taping first, and, and then I'll deal with any housekeeping problems.